How are we doing, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Getting Jiggly with Ammo. And today we're opening up uh, one of our newest Kickstarters, Distilled, along with, well, the African Middle East expansion. Uh, we'll also go ahead and see if I can get it all to fit back in the box, which should be pretty easy since I'm not sleeving my cards. That said, let's go ahead and flip over the camera uh, and see what we've got. All right, so we go. We have the base game, core game, Distilled, a spirited strategy game by Paverson Games. Uh, we got Dave doing the construction and Eric doing the uh, art here. Uh, the art was a very appealing, one of the reasons I got into it. Uh, one to five players, 30 minutes, ages 14 and up. Uh, so a thematic strategy card game about the science and business of crafting alcoholic spirits and distillery. Uh, so I picked this up because I would like to play some games similar to this. Uh, where you're making uh, or crafting, well, I want to say alcoholic beverages, but I used to be make beer, I would brew beer, uh, and I haven't found that many beer making games. There was one called Homebrew, but I think it's out of print and therefore not able to be found. This seemed like the next best option. Now, we also got the Kickstarter goodies uh, and upgrades because this was the all-in pledge. The other goodies or upgrade components I've already put in, which is the coins and the uh, first player token. Uh, so the first thing was a little shot glass. Uh, I used to collect shot glasses. I kind of collect shot glasses. Um, I more collect pint glasses, but I don't collect pint glasses. It's very weird. I have a lot of both. Uh, but this is another shot glass to add to the collection that I do or don't have. Uh, however, I want to think about it. Currently, they are just all in a cabinet uh, in our uh, one suite. Uh, so there we go. Uh, the big D for distilled. And then Patterson Games on the back. Uh, some people don't like these little gimmicky like add-ons and stuff like that. But I mean, each their own. I think I got them because I, I think they technically came out free in the All-In Pledge. Because I was going to go ahead and pay for the upgraded uh, coins and stuff anyways. So for me, it was just kind of like, well, I get these while I'm at it. Uh, and then you get a lot of the different... Um, uh, liquor types that you can brew in the game. So each one of them is on one of these. You got tequila, uh, bahui, bahiu. I don't know the the I's and the A's and the U's and, and see now I don't know if that's Japanese or Chinese. So now I'm even more confused. Uh, rum, of course. Uh, Kuchaka, uh, which is I guess from South America somewhere. Uh, whiskey. Uh, now whisk. That's weird. Whiskey's on both sides. Uh, one thing that was kind of disappointing was it, oh, because it's spelled differently. Original whiskey and the original whiskey without the E. Okay. Vodka, moonshine. So one thing I don't remember if I mentioned um, during the campaign uh, on their thing, I don't know if they were looking for more ideas of different liquors or not, but somehow I completely missed uh, recommending Aguardiente. So Aguardiente is the... Uh, I guess official liquor of Colombia. It's um, what they make down there. Um, it kind of reminds me of black licorice. That's kind of how I explain it to people. It tastes kind of like black licorice. It's clear. It's very smooth if you like black licorice. If you don't like black licorice, then it's not gonna be very smooth. Um, but then there's like very little aftertaste. Uh, I don't know if you could mix it with other things. I've never looked. Um, most people down there just drink it straight. Uh, so this is the expansion. So this is Africa and the Middle East rule book. Uh, the components that are going to come in here, which include some additional uh, medals and things like that. Uh, different scoring objectives, uh, new mechanics that are being introduced, and then the new um, liquors or spirits that you'll be able to brew from the region. Uh, so you have the... Ah, I like this. Okay, so here's the pronunciation. So with me screwing up earlier, in here it's going to have the pronunciation. So Akpateshi. Uh, which is from Ghana. Um, you have Ur Iraq, uh, Lebanon. You have Bukahu. Buk Buk Bukahu. I should just stop now. I'm going to have Adri pronounce all these. She's the linguist. Uh, and then we have Grog uh, from Cape Verde. Uh, testing a flight. So, uh, tasting flight one, balance play. Tasting flight J, balance play. Tasting flight K, balance play. L, M, in. Okay, because each one of these is going to have a different um, structure, and then it tells you, okay, who they pair with. So it pairs with South Africa, Lebanon, Canada, U.S., India, Japan, uh, Ghana, UAE, Peru, Mexico, Korea, and then credits on the back. All right, and we have our handy-dandy silica gel. 
Now I never remember which games come with silica gels and which ones I've already thrown uh, the silica gels into. So I think this was in this habit. All right, so we have our punch board. So I forgot to do that. I hadn't punched these out yet. Uh, so those come out nice and easy. Um, these are the new uh, spirits. We have apple pie moonshine, green fairy, absinthe, black forest, uh, stellar, and kartoshka vodka. So these are new. I forget what these specifically are. Oh, come on. There, there we go. Holy cow, that took forever to focus. I can't remember specifically the purpose of these in the game. Um, just because, again, it's been a while since the Kickstarter campaign, so I don't remember um, <laughs> much about the gameplay. Uh, so this are, these are the, okay, so these are the promos. So then these are the new promos. You have the apples, uh, the star anise, more apples, uh, and strobawa potatoes. Uh, so those are more ingredients. Uh, new flavors in the promo pack. Um, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be blank. So it's a tasting journal, flavor, observations, ratings, tasting journal two. So I'm guessing, I guess you can make your own uh, flavors. I like these, but I don't. Because mainly because I can't, I don't have very clean writing. Oddities, I think, is better than mine, but still, it's not going to match the original game. I mean, I guess for people that like to customize their games, that's not for me. Uh, next are items. So they have the absinthe bottle, so you can make absinthe. And you have the designer bottle, which has the designer as the face. That's kind of cute. Uh, cute, funny, neat. <laughs> uh, and then you have your, I guess, additional uh, people. So you have Ali Cat Armstrong, Idris El Makrani, uh, Hans Hanna Eisenberg, and Svetlana Yokovlevna. Yokol yeah, you guys are correct me in the comments. Uh, and then, of course, it's got some info about them, which is kind of neat, so you can read about them. All right. Next are the new... Okay, so you got the uh, new uh, signatures or spirit awards. Uh, so family Tradition, Lion Share, Spice of Life, Worth the Weight, and Collector's Edition. And then now we're getting into the expansion content. So this is, okay, so this is the Africa Northeast uh, expansion. So you have your tiles uh, for each of your uh, liquors. So I'll just show three of those. There we go, yep. I gotta, gotta make sure it doesn't focus on her on the, on the game board because that seems to be what it wants to do is focus on her. So you have those, a um, bunch of those, a bunch more. I'm gonna have to take these and then unfortunately sort them to put them all back in this box at the end. And these are CBBA distillery goals. So, okay, so these are, okay, more solo. So new for solo goals uh, to get you points. And then distillery goals. Uh, and then this is back to where it began, yellow glass investment. So for points, different point values. So you get those. And we have our distillers. So same as the uh, promo pack. But these, of course, will be from the Africa, Middle East um, region. So you get all of them. And then they signature. Okay, so they have a signature recipe, starting resources. Okay, so again, some of we were like asymmetric powers. Uh, every, so that way, every time you play, it's going to feel different because you can change up uh, what you are doing. I'm not sure why my ingredients were split in half. Um, so these are premium ingredients. These are signature ingredients, but I could have sworn the ingredient cards said. So I may have messed up my box already because these are different than these. So we'll see that when I go through the regular box. Uh, so these are your premium ingredients. Uh, and again, it wants to focus on everything but the cards. Uh, so you got ancient grains, hydroponic plants, organic fruit, uh, natural alcohol, uh, glucose syrup. Are these? And then your uh, signature 
uh, if removed from spirit stack during a distill phase, you may return it to your spirit. Okay, so I guess the signature ingredient goes with the signature player. So we got uh, figs, palm wine, finger millet, anise seed, date palm, and some sugar cane. All right, let's keep those separate so that way I can remember what I'm doing here. All right, and then these are your, okay. So these I know I did correct in the box. So you, it's because it, it specifically says on top, so premium item versus a standard or a basic item, they all change. So you got your, come on, focus, 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 focus. This thing is doing, this is like one of the worst times it's ever had at trying to focus on the cards. So 55 gallon drum, terracotta, we got two of those, sherry butt, uh, beaded bottle, long neck bottle, silver bottle, unlabeled bottle. So I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. Like, can you just mix all these in from the beginning? I'm gonna store, put them in storage that way. Um, there is an icon I did notice. Uh, it is one important thing to have on all of your games is a icon that there you go shows you which expansion they go into so these are your um distillery upgrade cards for the expansion Let's see. so you have the still okay so it's just a type of still uh copperage a wood chipper a charring fur charring furniture you're gonna char okay to char the, the barrels i'm like that looks like something's on fire advertising agent a hipster distiller the manager, the black market dealer, and a mixologist. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious if you can just mix them all from the beginning or if it changes the game. Uh, and then these are the regular tasting journals. So these are these are what they look like, what the actual tasting journals should look like. Uh, which is why I said there's no way I would make a card look like this. So if it's not going to cosmetically look and blend together, my OCD won't allow that to happen. So it tastes like apple, tastes like cardboard, citrus, coconut, gravy, melon, nail polish. I don't know if I want something that tastes like nail polish or wet dog for that matter, or wet dog. All right, and then the last thing are um, the uh, cards. Um, so this is how you set it up. That was what was showing in the beginning. Um, and then there are different ones that you have to make during the game. Uh, it looks like there's five of each. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so there's five of each because uh, it's a five player game. And then there are the different on the back. So you know, different, different options. All right. Uh, we will keep our little gel, 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 gel pack. Why? Because we need that because we live in Florida and humidity is a beast on board games. All right. So let's go ahead and get this open. Stop. Uh, so this, of course, is telling you that don't throw away the punch boards. Put them underneath the board box. A couple of unboxings I've done, I've always mentioned that. You always put them under the box to bring it up to even level. Because uh, if you look, that brings it almost dead even. Still a little bit lower. Uh, and then on the back, it does have the storage. It's not very clear where some things go because it just has arrows pointing to like three different trays. Uh, but I think I figured it out. So we should be good to go. Uh, first taste step-by-step -step guide for new players. This is nice. I do like when rule books have like an intro so you can just start and then reference the other rule book for more advanced rules. But at the same time, I sometimes don't like that either. Uh, first taste. Uh, so this is your setup. So you set up the market exactly like this for the premium ingredients. Uh, first taste player setup. Uh, they say player one is Brazil or the Americas. Uh, and you get these items, player two, player three, player four. Okay, so it recommends each uh, person of what you're gonna play. Then introduction goes over round one, making your first purchase, your second purchase. Okay, so this is not only, not only is it a, you know, this is how you should play the first time, it actually tells each person what to do on their first turn. So, Again, kind of mixed bag with this. Like sometimes I like when it does that because it does teach you how to play the game. But because sometimes when they handhold you so much, then once it's actually your turn, you completely forget what you're supposed to do because you've relied on the uh, tutorial so much. Uh, so it goes through all the way through round two. So it takes you through one full round and 
round two it gives you i guess some suggestions and then future rounds uh it says what each person should probably work on and then continue your game uh reference the real rule book all right so this is the real rule book so uh the only thing with that it was like first taste I, well i guess because it told you how to set up the market but like it didn't tell you how to set up the rest of these boards um so again if you guys have ever heard me gripe about it i'm gonna you know one of my biggest pet peeves is rule books that they make the size of the box for the sake of making it the size of the box they, they don't need to be that there's no way that you can reference anything in here without laying it on the table please don't do that anymore i, I say publishers please stop doing that but they're gonna keep doing it uh there you go so you have your component list uh setup uh examples your player board player setup uh, game overview so basically a, a brief example the goal uh what you're trying to do which is always good you want to know what you're going to do before you get to the end of the rule book and it says here this is how you score the game uh in game how the game ends uh your distillery boards how you're going to be making your stuff um identities um lots of examples i'm guessing this is all examples uh, while we try to preserve many reward elements of the game, we've designed the game for strategy play. For example, the greatest portion of spirits we drink today are made from grains and grapes. Uh, we've created fruit as a larger category and plant category to capture everything else. Sugar cane, agave, and even some spice. Okay, so it's just going over the cards. Okay, and then you go through gameplay. And more examples. So distilled phase example. Uh, your selling phase. Uh, aged spirit bonuses, uh, the longer you age them, usually the more they're worth, at least in the real world. Uh, aging phase, and then end of round, so same thing, more examples. All that looks like all the blue are examples, spirit awards, and then end of game uh, and scoring. Uh, so that was only page 16. So here, commonly forgotten rules. So now my question is, which, which do I prefer uh, in a rule book? Do I want a brand new game to have an FAQ or does it seem less, uh, I don't know what the word is, less of a, we, we know people had these questions instead of clarifying them in the book, we gave you an FAQ versus commonly forgotten rules, which is just a reminder of something that hopefully is already written in the book. I think this is better, right? You're saying these are things people forget. We did mention them back there. Now, what I would do is I would say what page you mentioned this on so you can read the context um, of, you know, whatever the commonly forgotten thing was. Uh, tasting flights. Uh, these provide you with customization and diversity to keep uh, the play spirited. Each of the eight flights includes seven spirits of different prestige. Uh, flights are paired with the distiller identities below that provide standard backup to these identities. During setup, choose a tasting flight, then randomly deal each player two distiller from their paired with that flight. Uh, the first three flights, A, B, C, are the most balanced. Okay, so that's what the flights do. It's basically for more variability during um, future gameplays. Uh, spirits of distilled. Uh, all regions, Americas. Okay, so it, it gives you some information about the region and the um, liquors found uh, there. So that's cool. So yeah, so they do have uh, country Peru. Rum is now global, mostly from the islands. Uh, okay. Uh, Cochaca is Brazil and tequila is Mexico. So there we go. We need a South American expansion with Aguardiente. And then the solo rules are only two pages. So it must use most of it. And then you do have a player aid here. I can't remember if there's a player aid in the box. Again, I've already unboxed everything. Uh, but hopefully there are player aids in the boxes. I don't like when the only place you have a player aid is on the back of the board. All right. Uh, so the first layer, you've got your distillery boards. So we have five distillery boards. They are all identical. Uh, so no player powers there. And then we have, so I guess I'll just keep putting things up there in that box. Uh, we have a a car, a truck. I guess this is the delivery for sales. Uh, you got ingredients, and then you have your uh, containers. Uh, that's actually small. All right, and then you have all of your uh, spirit awards. They all go down in here. So gold digger, collect two gold spirit labels. 
uh, Settle Spirit with four, uh, whatever that symbol is, cards or more. Uh, so you have I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And you don't play with them all. If I, if I remember correctly in the rule book, you, you select uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And then you have the master distiller. So basically whoever wins the game, this is one of those, you know, you get to take it, take a picture of it. Uh, and then post it on social media because that's what it says to do. And then so while we're here, we will go ahead and throw you guys there. So again, still plenty of room for a couple more expansions if they decide to well, they decide to expand the game. Uh, so here's the first player token, and then this is the upgraded token. So definitely better. Has a nice wash on it. I do like that. Um, it says Slint Mahath. Not sure what that means. There you go. Uh, but it does fit perfectly fine. This actually can fit on top of there, but I don't need that. Off you go. Uh, the barrel for, or I think it's for one of the tracks. You have a barrel. And then this is your market there's your market board so that's not too bad of a size uh your uh this is your player board so the nice thing with this is what happens is they designed it the clipboards because i remember one of the updates they talked about uh they had to modify it uh, but yeah you basically just slide that in there that sits in there and then you have your two basics uh which is the same for everybody and then you have whatever your uh, card is here. Goes in the bottom and then little markers so you can check them off once you get them. And then your signature recipe goes on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and throw these back in here while we are doing this. All right, so move that out. All right, so next are your containers here. I've got them split. Um, I don't know how you'd want to do it. And anybody, I mean, you can do it any way you want, but basically because of the, you know, a lot of people, if you have more players going around the table, you could split it 50, 50, but it said these went in here. So I split it this way because it made the most sense. So these are just the uh, cubes for when you make your uh, liquors and you put them on the player board that was over there. So you have gold, silver, and bronze plus a silica gel pack because again, flawed either. And then these are the coins. So of course um, I did get, like I said, I mentioned get the upgraded coins. So here's your standard cardboard uh, coin, uh, standard token, standard thickness. Uh, and you got like a little barley there on the back. And then this is the upgraded, whoops, coin. So pretty much looks identical. Just, you know, metal coin, nice. Clinkity clink. Uh, the I'll just I'll just show them this way now that you guys have seen that. So this is the tin. Whoops. Oh, we do it this way. Well, there we go. You get your tin. So really like it, and it's nice 3D embossed too. It's not it's not very flat. They're light though. I do feel like they're a little bit lighter than most coins that I feel, which isn't a bad thing. It's just you can tell it's not. Like, honestly, I can't even feel these in my hand. A little bit right there when I go like that, I can. So there is the ones. And they have grains on the back. There we go. So coins. All right. And then this next tray is the tray that holds all of the uh, tokens for when you make your different uh, liquors. Um, so they all fit perfectly fine. You have some bigger rows here. Uh, this right here has a little bit extra room uh, because of, again, expansions. So I really do like that the box, they already planned for expansions, right? Because I just added those, uh, which is from this expansion. And then if I add, now the question is once I add everything from both expansions, I think we're going to probably be maxed out. So those are the ones from here. And then we have our rock. Huh. I just noticed that too. So it's it's actually spelled two different ways. It's spelled a rock with a Q and a rock with a K. Let me go there. We have Boroka. Key. 
Last Boroka. And we have the uh, Kapeteshi. Ak Akpeteshi. You guys are going to destroy me in the comments. So this is why I don't like this reason. Like a lot of times, it's not that I don't want to say a designer's name. I don't want to butcher a designer's name. So I'm currently butchering uh, liqueur names. So there's Grog. I only know that one because that one I've technically heard of. I mean, that's a more, I don't know if it's more communal, more popular, or mainly just because it's in like movies and stuff a lot. Um, there you go. So all of that fit. I do have an extra uh, one of you. You go down there. Uh, and then you do have the player tokens. So you have the four, the five, because it's a five player game, uh, five different player tokens, uh, all screen printed. They're big chonky boys too. Like these are, these are thick, uh, thick meeples. I, I say meeples, thick movers, thick tokens, thick mm, player pieces. <laughs> I don't know what to call them. Uh, and then you have this, which, okay, that's annoying. I gotta take that out to take these out. Uh, and then it's just your victory, victory points once you get over 50 and then 100. So the movers are for your victory points, right? You move them around the board. And they have one per each, All right? So that is that. So that's everything that fits in there. There's still a little bit of room. I mean, technically, if you doubled up some of these, you might be able to fit more. However, I did notice they have to be angled for the lid to fit on. So maybe not. Uh, so then this is the tasting board uh linen finish this has i don't know no that came off it was like a little oil smudge there all right and then we have so all the cards on the bottom this is just how i put the cards uh so you have your starting item cards uh so basically simple things like glass bottle um and then metal barrels instead of having a uh upgraded right because once you upgrade that you'd have like a a wood cask or something like that so clay barrel i guess it's better than a uh <laughs> i guess a clay barrel is better than a metal can uh, but then of course your wood barrel uh, is what you really want and then you want to be able to uh burn that or age that to get more flavor into your um, alcohol uh, and then the premium uh so you have your american standard barrel uh your ex bourbon um hog's head the Dolium barrel, the Caverve barrel, Caverve, it's weird to have a K and a V together. A uh, stainless steel barrel. Hmm, wouldn't think that would still be used, but I guess so. Uh, jug, so you can do some moonshine. Mason jar, so you can do some moonshine. <laughs> Frosted glass, plastic glass, skull, pig bottle, vintage decanting bottle, ceramic bottle, faceted half, uh, etched bottle, Scandinavia, canister bottle wax seal pirate bottle there you go that's how you're gonna make it run with your pirate bottle uh wrap bottle and a worm bottle most likely for your tequila tequila uh additional uh victory point cards uh so distillery goals uh so whole bunch of those again any game that has a lot of different goals that you can go for is always going to be fun for us because it just means it Again, the replayability, the asymmetric, but also it means it gives you a lot to try to aim for. And then every game, of course, is going to be different for what you aim for. It doesn't, so it doesn't feel like you're just making a single, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like you're like, okay, every time this is the goal. So therefore I'm going to build that optimized engine and that's how I'm going to play it. Uh, so these are all the solo cards. So you have C's. Uh, B's, which look like pattern cards. And then you have your A's. And then this is solo goal swap card five. Uh, once for a game, you may swap any two goal cards within the same row. If you do flip this card, five will be added to the target score. Okay, so it makes the game harder by you switching out the goal cards. So, all right, those will probably be there for the rest of their life. <laughs> We don't play so well i had been playing solo so oddly once a month works monday evening so i've been thinking about doing solo games so i don't know what games will be uh so these are your ingredients uh so these are basic ingredients so yeah i might have mixed these up so we're gonna see uh, so greens uh mixed plants mixed fruit and then now we got into premium all right so we're gonna I'm gonna put these here for basics. 
Uh, so figs, juniper berries, grapes, uh, your turbo yeast. So maybe let's say during the distill fades, you get one additional yeast. Uh, mountain spring water, because rather than tap water, I use tap water when I made beer. I never really noticed. Millet, corn, barley, potatoes. Uh, very common for whiskey, I think. Uh, and then these are your, I don't know what type of ingredients these are because they don't say basic. So alcohol, yeast says basic. So I'm confused about the alcohol. Uh, lots of yeast. Uh, water basic, water, instead of the premium water. Uh, mixed grains, so now we're, now we're called up there. Okay. So we'll put all you guys there. Uh, so anise, sugarcane. Okay, so it's very similar to those that were in there, actually. Palm, gave, and apples. Yeah, those are almost identical to those other premiums. And then the last one. Uh, more alcohol. We're going to put all you there with the rest of the alcohol. And then these are the signature ingredients. So there is one more row up here that was covered up. So I guess I'll put the signature ingredients up there. So, bear barley, winter rye. Okay, so it's based off of your characters. So these are your signatures for each of the different um, breweries, distillers, right? Juniper berries. And then there are duplicates because more than one, okay, person uses it. So that's nice. Uh, and then premium. So there's a lot of room. Like I've got all the cards in here and there's still plenty of room. So if you are a sleever, looks like they've definitely, you know, made sure that there will be some extra room. However, you won't be able to probably do like I've got them here where I've got them separated. You're probably gonna have to combine a couple of the stacks. Uh, sorghum, wheat, and rye. All that with the premiums. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll do these while we're at it. So premiums, those are all premiums. These were the signature. Uh, it's slightly higher than that. Mm. And these are the equipment. Oh, distillery upgrade. We haven't gotten that yet. We haven't gotten that far yet, Will. Uh, and then these are premium items. Put all those there. All right. Uh, so equipment upgrade. So probably very similar to what I what we pulled out of the expansion, right? You have your still ventilator, a drone camera. That's an upgrade. Once per round, copy the ability of distillery upgrade that this is... That is face of the market. Okay, <laughs> you're you're spying on the uh, competition. Uh, Glassworks, large storage, malting flour, and then some of them have like okay, some of them get you victory points. One victory point for each of your equipment distillery upgrades if you get the natural spinning. Okay, so you can combo off of these. So that's really neat. Specialist. All right, so biochemists, so different types of people that help you get more. Now, I wonder if there's a special spot they have to be on the board, or if you can just replace any spot on the board. There she is, the Master Blender, so that's the art from the uh, front of the game. I do like all the art. The art is actually pretty nice. Um, I've seen other games similar to where they... The gameplay seemed interesting, but then the art just wasn't very attractive. Uh, and then same thing, more flavors. So it's like, you're not you're not really into the game, birthday cake. So I remember during the campaign, they had like competitions for different tastings and it's what they would put in. I think that's what got put it into the, uh, the expansion. So these are all your different tasting, nutty, oaky, old cellar. <laughs> that means it didn't come out right. Uh, PD, piney, plastic, oh, rubber tires, seaweed, skunky. Smoky. Now, like the one thing with like certain flavors, like you're know, like, okay, marshmallow, some good one, is that while one person might think it's a bad taste or bad flavor and something is like, wow, nobody would want that. Somebody else might really like it. A good example is my, I had an old roommate. She loved sour beers. So a sour beer is made by using a yeast strain that is already, um, spoiled basically it, it, it's 
it wasn't when it was first made, but then eventually it, it spoils. So therefore it's not really that good anymore. So you are intentionally making your beer spoiled. Um, so it's kind of ironic that way, right? Is that you're gonna intentionally um, spoil your beer so that way you can get a sour beer as it would be. All right, and then the last cards in here are the um, the characters. So you have each of your different character cards with their separate abilities. And their signature recipe, what they start with. So same as the other ones. So we will take all of them, put them there. I think I am going to switch something though, because now this, this stack, once I added that other one, got a little bit too big. So I think what I'm going to do is switch these because they're smaller. And we're just going to do these, these, and this, and then take my ingredients, put them here. And more ingredients. Are these all ingredients? Oh, these are the signature ingredients. Okay. Yeah, so that's fine. signature ingredients next to the people. So that is all of that. That is that. This is this. So now the question. Okay, so I wasn't sure, but yeah, there are player aids for each print. So that's good. Player aids are good. Player aids should be mandatory in all games printed after, well, 10 years ago. Um, so now the question will all of these fit? Ah, they do just barely. It kind of slides off. All right, so I'm going to put everything back in the box. So this goes in first. Uh, yep. All right. That. 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 And then. Rule books. Books. Be stop. Don't do this thing. Oops. I forgot to put my uh, thingies back in. Get in there. Get in there. There's an excellent one for good measure. <laughs> and that is not right. Oh, and then of course, all of the backers' names, the playtesters' name. Oh, it's the playtester names are all on the side here. I can't show you because I will I will lose all my contents if I do. All right, there we go. That is Distilled by Paverson Games. If you want to check out this gameplay, once we get it to the table, I do have it planned during, I guess, a thematic week where we're going to be playing this and Viticulture. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button that we get notified when we go live. Until next time, guys. Peace.